Tired of being taken over in your Honda Civic? But concerned about the reliability issues that greater horsepower typically brings? So what ideal sports car is as reliable as it is stylish? Let me introduce you to the Nissan 370Z. Not only do you get 330 horsepower, rear wheel drive, and if you're lucky, a six speed manual transmission, you also get a vehicle that's capable for a quarter million miles or more if it's properly maintained. Yeah, kind of sounds like a bank breaker, but you can actually get these for around $15,000. And that is an ideal bargain. And so I've been doing a ton of research on these 370Zs. And if you're interested or you watch this video and you are interested in them, take a breath, you're in the right place. Because I'm gonna break down exactly why you should buy Nissan's newest Z. Let's go. So the first thing that you're probably thinking is, what exactly is the Nissan 370Z? It was essentially Nissan's front-engined, rear-wheel drive, two-door sports car, and it was packing lots of attitude. Production began in 2009, and it still continues today, which means that it's pretty much been around forever, kind of like me. Except in 2013, it did receive a facelift. And with that, you got slightly more aggressive styling and a few small reliability aiding adjustments. And as far as options go, you have a couple of options. If you're down for a little bit of topless action, they got you covered with a drop top. Or if you want something a little bit more sporty, they also have the coupe. Now, as far as shifting goes, you can either have a seven speed automatic or a six speed manual transmission. And the one cool and also not so cool thing, except it's really helpful on a first date, don't ask me how I know, is that it has the rev matching downshifts. I wonder if that's a feature that, that you can turn off or just code out. I think everybody should learn how to heel toe. Do you know how to heel toe? Let us know down in the comments. And if you wanna buy our limited edition Save the Manuals tee, click up here. Now what might make it a little bit easier for you is that with convertibles, you can only get an automatic seven speed unless you get the touring model. Then you can get the six speed manual. So definitely do your homework because if you get the sport package on the 370Z, which includes 19 inch Ray's forged wheels, Nissan branded Akebono performance brakes, and even a limited slip differential. I'm not gonna lie, that, that is actually a sports package. That's not just a couple of fake vents and exhaust pumped into your sound system. That's like legit. And if you're trying to find a car that will set yourself apart, especially when it comes time to sell using the ideal car strategies, sport package might be one of those things that you'll look for. Now the 370Z is the successor of the ever so popular 350Z which is loved by teenagers and members of the drift community alike. Mm. At a glance, the two may look pretty similar, but they're not. The 370Z, believe it or not, has a four inch shorter wheelbase, a 1.3 inch wider body, and overall, it's three tenths of an inch shorter. Typically shorter and fatter doesn't equal more sporty, but the new Z, thanks to better brakes, interior and chassis is just a better car in each and every aspect than the older 350Z. I guess you can kind of think of it like the 370Z is like brandy and the 350Z is more like a Jaegerbomb. They both have their time and place, but if you're trying to daily drive it and still have something that's fun on the weekends, the 370Z might be your golden ticket. And much of that is thanks to its new VVEL engine, but more on that later. Because I believe that the target market on the 370Z is and always will be a younger demographic, but by improving the ride quality and decreasing annoying vibrations, especially inside the cabin, the new Z will appeal to a slightly older demographic. I don't see many of these being someone's first car, but I do see a lot of people taking a good hard look at these for their first sports car. And let's talk about the exterior for a moment. Now, I'm gonna be a tad bit superficial. Up front, we got the boomerang styled headlights offering an interesting aesthetic element unique to the 370Z. And quite honestly, I think it still looks pretty good even today. It's just pretty angular and that's kind of the design language a lot of manufacturers have gone with. So although they have built them for, it seems like decades, it still looks rather contemporary. And underneath those headlights, we've got something completely foreign to modern day BMW designers. Yeah, you guessed it, a reasonably sized grille. The slight convex of the aluminum hood kept by those two lines arching down towards the bumper look both menacing and pretty modern. And if you get a coupe, the rear hatch is also made of aluminum. However, we can't miss out on probably my favorite design feature, those rear fender flares, baby. I just, I love how they 
bulge out and it gives you the opportunity to run some very thick tire. And we all know it never hurts to have a little bit of girth. Now, as far as the convertible goes, it definitely looks better topless. And I don't know about you, but it kind of looks awkward with the top up. It kind of reminds me of like a Huracan Spider with the top up, or have you ever seen like an old Murcielago Roadster? Yeah, that bikini type top, it's not doing anybody any favors. And the 370Z with the convertible top, just it's, it's not the best. And so if you were asking me which one you should get for your ideal sports car, I definitely recommend a coupe 10 out of 10 times. Not only do they look better, they weigh less and it's way easier to get a manual transmission. But frankly, whether you desire a roof or you don't, the 370Z with all its angular lines and silver door handles will attract attention nonetheless. Now, since you'll be spending a lot of time in it, let's talk about the interior of the 370Z for a minute. And if I were to describe it in one word, it would be functional. Functional over luxurious. I think it's the easiest way to describe Nissan's budget sports car. But I don't think the buyer of this car knew at over $30,000 is buying this for a luxurious interior. And the materials that they use leaves plenty to be desired. Quote me on that. But since you're buying it used at roughly 15 grand, it's more than reasonable. Because although I've never been blown away by the interior, I kind of think of it this way. What it lacks on the inside, it makes up in how much fun it is to drive. So I think we should have a little chat about performance. And here are some specific performance figures that you should really know. The two-door sports coupe weighs in at 3,232 pounds. And when you put the pedal to the metal, it's gonna accelerate from zero to 60 in 5.1 seconds and dance through the apexes with 0.9 Gs of grip. And to put that into a little bit of perspective, Motor Trend tested a 16 Mustang GT and it only had 0.82 Gs of grip. So although this thing isn't pulling a G plus on the skid pad, it's actually sometimes fun when it gets a little bit loose because it handles it so well. And what's gonna help it get loose is the heartbeat under the hood. Nissan collectively was able to design a powerful and also a very reliable vehicle. But the true beauty of their design lies within the 3.7 liter V6 engine. And this power plant is shared with the Infiniti G37. And it's known as the VQ37 VHR or VVEL for short. And this puppy plays in the intersection of the perfect amount of power and reliability. And at the time, this engine was cutting edge for Nissan because it's the first motor with variable valve technology. And I'm not gonna get into all of it, but essentially it just means that the explosions in the engine are more controlled and efficient. When you plant your foot on the gas, power just builds smoothly all the way up to its 7,500 RPM redline. If you look at the spec sheet, the 370Z has 43 more horses than the 350 and only eight foot pounds more of torque. But again, the 370 just for some reason feels way more healthy. And I think it's all that technology built into it that makes it a smoother and more confidence inspiring performer. But you've been warned, even though the new VQ motor is buttery smooth, it still makes Z noises we know and love. Rest in peace your neighbors. <laughs> And if we're talking about gas mileage, the 370Z returns 19 miles per gallon in the city and 26 on the highway. So yeah, it's not a gas sipper, but it's not out of this world for a higher end sports car. And to put that into perspective, it's dead even with the 2014 BMW M235i. But the key part here is that it's for tens of thousands of dollars less. And that's only if miles per gallon is what really moves you, which you probably shouldn't be watching this channel if that's the case. Anyway, moving on. As far as reliability goes, typically the Nissan 370Zs are known to be pretty reliable. But if you've been around the car world for any amount of time, you know that each and every model has some sort of issue. And the 370, well, it has a couple. The first is the steering wheel may just refuse to unlock. And when that happens, it prohibits you from being able to start your car. And the second is this thin paper gasket in the motor that on relatively rare occasions may fail. Thankfully, you're buying a Japanese sports car, so parts are reasonably affordable. And if you don't wanna deal with either of these issues at all, they were both addressed on the 2013 and up model years. So now that you got the facts on the Nissan 370Z, it's time to find out if this is really an ideal car. The scoring for this is very simple. With each category, two thumbs up is the most that they can get, and that means it's off the chart awesome. And then the minimum is two thumbs down, which means that you pretty much wouldn't wish it upon your worst enemy. And the first thing we're gonna talk about is the smiles per gallon. One of the best things about this car is that 3.7 liter engine. And it is so rewarding to run out.
and I actually think it's a little bit better than the chassis, which sometimes feels a little bit heavy, but it's still a thrill to toss around in the corners. Yeah, it actually likes to push and understeer at the limit, but oversteer is available on demand. Overall, driving a 370Z does put a smile on my face. It delivers satisfactory acceleration, and it's definitely a lot of fun in the twisties. So I'm gonna give it one thumbs up. Now, in terms of curb appeal, which essentially is like, when you show up, how do you show up? And how much does it stick out? And it really depends on the crowd and and how many mods you have on your Z. A stock 370 might attract vaping high schoolers, but if you turn up with a boosted 370 on a nice set of wheels, you'll be turning heads of all ages. I do think it takes some modifications to really make this thing a neck breaker, but bottom line is it gets one thumbs up for curb appeal. I didn't realize this before, but it actually is really tough to spell reliability without VVEL. Well, sort of kind of kidding, because when you look at used examples, these things are for sale with 200, 250,000 plus miles on them. And the fact that these sports cars with this kind of mileage are still on the road shows that Nissan really did something right for once. A reliable sports car is not just a pipe dream anymore. And that's all thanks to clever Japanese innovation. So get ready for it. Reliability, two thumbs up. Yeah, it's that good. Now, one of the things about an ideal car is we got to look into practicality because your ideal car is something that should be driven. And so cargo space is definitely a stat I look at before I even consider buying that model. And the 370Z has 6.9 cubic feet of storage space, which is definitely enough room for you to daily drive and take on a weekend getaway. Now, if you have a family, it might get a little bit tight, but I don't think that's exactly why you're buying the 370. Now, as far as fuel economy goes, it's not terrible for a 332 horsepower car. Like we mentioned earlier, 19 mile per gallon city, 26 on the highway, but I've had buddies that have 370s that actually get closer to the 30 miles per gallon on the highway, which isn't bad and it is a sports car, so it doesn't need to have a lot of room, but overall, I'm gonna give it no thumbs up, no thumbs down. Now, one of the main reasons you and I are both interested in the 370 is because you can get them for about $15,000. And that is unmistakably a great value for your money. Not only is it reliable, but replacement parts are reasonable. And the driving experience rivals German cars almost double the price. And on top of that, insurance rates are pretty reasonable as well. I just got a quote for a 25 year old male. And if you have a clean driving record, yeah, I'm looking at you. Drive safe. You're looking at around $245 per month. So if we take a look at the depreciation schedule, you can see that year over year for this 2013 370Z has been steadily going down in value. But over the last few months, they've actually started to climb and prices today are up 7% over a year ago. So part of that may be due to the pandemic and people are buying their dream car or in this case, their ideal car. But I actually think that the facelift models, the 13 and 14s, have kind of hit the bottom of their depreciation schedule. And for the next year or two, they're gonna stay at around 15 to $20,000. And because it's fun to drive and affordable, I wanna give it two thumbs up. I really do. But since they mass produce them, as far as value goes, I think you could buy it and drive it for free for a year, but it's not something that's gonna go up in value a ton. It's never gonna become a collectible. So for value, I'm gonna give it one thumb up. So. The verdict. Is the 370Z an ideal car? <laughs> Heck yeah, it is. I want one. Do you? Because I think that it's probably, well, it may be the best first sports car available on the market today. Yeah, there are cars that are faster and more beautiful, but they're more costly to purchase and maintain. The Nissan 370Z offers excitement, style, and reliability at a price point that's tough to ignore. And in the comments below, let us know what your ideal spec for a 370Z would be. Year, trim, color. Here at Ideal Media, that is what we're all about, getting you in your very own ideal car. And so if you enjoyed this video, hit the like button. If you're new here, my name's Brad Danger. Subscribe and turn on the notification bell and let us know the next car that you'd like to see us break down next. I hope you enjoyed this video. Until next time, oh, as always, keep living the ideal lifestyle.